The emerging markets are now home to more than half of the world's population, a disproportionate share of its young people, a rapidly growing share of its GDP, and a large proportion of its economic growth. By any measurement, emerging market countries are a growing force today and will have even greater geopolitical significance tomorrow. And yet, for these countries to continue on track, that growth must be sustainable. I've been working in or on emerging markets for nearly 50 years. This, I believe, because of the way we set it up, because of the support that we have in, in the college, because of the people from around the world who've taken an interest in and have committed themselves to the Emerging Markets Symposium, I think we have a real chance of making a difference. I think universities are places to generate ideas and improve people's human, uh, the, the, the welfare of the people. So this, I couldn't think of a better format than EMS. Papers that are presented and the conclusions that are arrived at enter into the policy discussions around the world. And I think that's tremendously useful. And welcome to all of you. It's an enormous pleasure for me as Vice Chancellor to welcome you here to the Emerging Markets Symposium. The Emerging Markets Symposium has made it its mission to help ensure sustainable growth through the careful examination of issues of human welfare and development in the emerging market countries. Since its inception in 2009, the EMS has examined issues around health and healthcare, urbanisation and tertiary education. We focused on human development and welfare for two reasons. First, because it needed to be done, uh, and second, because nobody else was doing it. There are all sorts of organisations, all sorts of forums in the world now, and have been for some time, that focus on financial issues, on capital flows uh, and, and related matters. Nobody was looking at the really fundamental question of human development, and it became very obvious to us as we looked at this that if those issues were not addressed, then economic growth would not be sustainable. Unhealthy children can't learn. Unhealthy adults can't work productively. Uneducated, untrained people cannot be productive. So there are both economic reasons and there are also uh, ultimately ethical reasons why this deserves priority attention. The Emerging Markets Symposium is hosted annually by Green Templeton College, Oxford. The history and mission of the college charges us with bringing together academic work and professional practice across the fields of health and medicine, business management and associated social sciences. This is a college that has very profound interests in human welfare and in practical solutions. And the EMS is a device that enables us to get academics, practitioners and People are at the cutting edge of thought about how we can deliver human services in the 21st century together. Organisers invite carefully selected expert participants from around the world, people who can have a real influence on the future policies of their own governments and institutions. What we've discovered, I think, is that mix of uh, attendees is, is very distinctive. Uh, and is very attractive to people. One of the key drivers of this symposium is the sponsor, CNC Alpha. They, have, they gave us money to get the program going and we could then attract all the right people to contribute to this effort. Secondly, I think we could be brought in quality people. If you look at the people who come, 40 to 45 people for every seminar once a year, you will get area experts, you will get academics, you'll get researchers, and people who can then share with each other. And what we have done now is uh, expanded our ability to communicate the end results to the constituents and to the world at large. I believe the Oxford atmosphere, the environment of the Oxford community is very important for this symposium. Actually, we even had the discussion in um, um, between sessions that maybe somehow this kind of symposium should be placed in emerging market countries. 
But I believe it's very important to keep it here because the whole atmosphere of creating knowledge is DNA of this place. During each symposium, participants have the opportunity to converse with each other informally and in total privacy, creating what the organizers believe is a uniquely stimulating and productive atmosphere in which knowledge can flow between emerging markets and high-income countries in both directions. What we try to do once they're together is to create an environment which is as secure as possible. Uh, after the first symposium, somebody who was very well known said, you know, I wouldn't have said what I said, or said it in the way I said it, if there'd been anybody from the press or the media anywhere near. It's because you've created an environment that makes me feel safe and trusted and trusting that I can actually do that. And that's fundamentally why we have the Chatham House Rule. The focus is very much on, you know, real world issues and not just purely academic uh, debates. And I think that's, uh, from my point of view, really important because uh, the, the issues we're facing are real issues that affect millions of people on a daily basis. So we just don't want to you know, have discussion for discussion's sake. So I didn't feel that uh, experts missed something very, very Green Templeton College students, many of whom are from emerging market countries themselves, are closely involved in the preparation, planning and aftermath of each symposium. For the organisers, each symposium is just the start of a process, the ultimate aim of which is to influence decision-making on every level, putting people at the heart of policy-making in every government department. EMS is making a big difference in emerging market countries. Some of it has to do with what goes on at the meetings, the discussions, the emergence of key priorities, uh, focusing on certain models. But I think uh, in that the majority of the participants are themselves from emerging market countries, the exchange of ideas that occurs at these meetings changes the way that they look at things and they learn from each other. I'm a great believer in bringing people together who come from very different environments, very different backgrounds, and providing them with an opportunity to, to share their experiences and to explore ways in which they think the world can be a better place. That sounds really idealistic, but that's what I believe with a passion. It's why I worked in the United Nations. So from my point of view, that's one of the most valuable aspects of EMS. You, you can see that maybe, just maybe, that there is a chance to translate uh, knowledge and research into reform, ideas into action. Since the first Emerging Markets Symposium, the economic balance of the world has shifted. Post-credit crunch, understanding and contributing to the sustainable development of emerging markets is now more important than ever. The world has moved rapidly now in many ways. And I think the symposia are even more important now than when they started. One of the big messages from the, from the three symposia is a very simple one, which is we are all in this together. Uh, there is no way that you can chop off, isolate a part of the world economy or, or a part of the world communication system or a part of the world health system and say we can deal with that in isolation. Uh, that's why this kind of discussion is so cutting edge. The first really poor people I saw in the world were in Bogota in 1964. Uh, up till then I'd only travelled in Europe. And the enduring image in my mind, the image of poverty, uh, the image of deprivation, is the child's face. It's always the child's face. And perhaps inevitably I always think of my own grandchildren and think of the difference between their prospects and the prospects of those children which, unless things change, are not very good at all. That's what